Intensity over here. Intensity. Um, welcome back to Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I am your arch nemesis, Sam Healy. So you have multiple arch nemesis? Nemesis. 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 I, I, I find new ones every time we release one of these stupid things. <laughs> well, now you've now you have one more. <laughs> Soon too. <laughs> All right. Today we're talking about worker placement games. Now, worker placement games is a genre that pretty much didn't even exist a decade ago. Yep. The first one that I played was Way Out West by Martin Wallace. It is possible that other ones existed before that, but basically a worker placement game, as Vassal <laughs> um, defines it, is a game in which you have a bunch of workers, it doesn't have to be workers, but stuff that you place in a spot in the board mm -hmm. and often no one else, that when you put it on a spot, that spot gives you an action uh, or gives you stuff and nobody else can go to that spot, usually. Stuff, Depends on the game. Stuff placement games. Yeah. Doesn't sound quite as good. <laughs> stuff placement. Well, I mean, there's a lot of these that aren't necessarily workers. Worker, right, yeah. Yeah, I, um, it's basically the same thing for me. I also made sure I did go through Board Game Geek and checked what they what their system sort of thinks is a is a worker <coughs> placement, which pretty much lined up with what I thought. But I did exclude, and you sort of touched on this. I did exclude cooperative games that have worker placement because while there is some worker placement going on, it does rob you of sort of the tension in worker placement. You know, which is that part where you go, "Ooh, I really hope that spot comes back around to me." Yeah, I had to. I mean, I had, that's just me. I, had, I, just, <laughs> I double checked my ledge real quick when you said that, and I, I don't have any co ops on my. Oh, um, oh, really? Okay. No, you Z, can leave it. You no, can no, leave it. no, Z convinced me. With that's just me. That's my thought. I think worker placement, <laughs> one of the main, one of the big aspects of a great worker placement is that tension. You're hoping that spot will get back to you because once you do place there, you lock it down. Okay, well, I had Robinson Crusoe on my list, but. That's that makes sense, and so I had number eleven. I considered backup. it. I considered it, and and I consider Atlantis Rising both worker placement games, both great games. Yeah. But cooperative. There's no tension in the worker placement, really. All right. So you think there should be tension? Now I'm looking at this again. Uh, okay. Well, again, I think that's a uh, <laughs> touching on uh, other conversations that have gone on in the past. That could be kind of a subgenre of almost yeah. of. Uh, of worker placement games to where you mean co-op yeah to where you can well, have I think a worker two, placement though. game but it's well, the co-op there's castaways also but i mean i mean i mean sure that might it might be a small subgenre right now yeah, but it yeah. could grow it's definitely a thing it lately especially I, I don't know i think it, it would be i would i, I would not invent it's not on my list but i would not invalidate it just because it's a co-op if it's oh, a worker I, I placement don't invalidate mechanic, it either i just figured you know i'm, I'm, I'm in my own no, I criteria you. i think yeah, i'm yeah. gonna exclude them yeah. now, Go ahead. I bet we have more crossover on this list than any other. And I bet we have very little... I can't believe you pick that because there will be a little bit of that. But some of the ones that I like that they don't like, for example, I like, what's he building in there? Yep. I don't think we're going to... But that didn't make my top ten. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to... I don't think I'm going to have very much overlap. I mean, I, I pick games I don't even like for this list. For... <laughs> Why? Are you stretching? Did you have to really stretch? No, I'm just kidding. I, I, oh, I, I oh. like to play all of these games. I'm okay. Just, I like to play all the ones I picked too, but I did realize while putting together my list that this is not one of my favorite mechanics. It is. Oh. It is one, one of my, my favorite. I, I like, do like a it. few games a lot, and then the other ones are all pretty good. I'm almost to the fact to where I'm almost to the place to where uh, worker placement games are, are almost, almost the only kind of Euro game that I really, really enjoy playing. Really? Okay. Yeah, because I mean, it's, I, I, it's just something about the mechanic that draws me in. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. And this is what we're gonna do this time. <laughs> oh boy. Here we, we have these giant dice. That I can never figure out a reason. We're gonna roll them, and whoever rolls the highest. Oh, yeah, it's not the crush one said it. Whoever rolls the highest gets to go first each All right. round. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. Number ten. Number ten. 
All right, here we go. Ready? Three. One. Five. You're three. first. All right. Here we go. My number 10. Uh, this this uh, worker placement game is a game that uh, I was just recently introduced to, and I picked it. Uh, for number 10 on my list, simply because of the fun factor, the funny factor, the comical factor that the game has with it, and that is Last Will. I picked Last Will because it's it's very, I don't know, it's a game, you know how some games kind of take themselves seriously? Mm, a lot or, of games. or too seriously? Yeah. A lot of games. Last Will does not do this. It, it is a total, almost a spoof on games that take themselves seriously. I mean, the expansion, you have to find a number of different ways to lose your job. And right. That's just really cool. That's mm -hmm. the really cool. <laughs> Burn your money. Right yeah, now. exactly. I mean, it's like a Brewster's Millions type of thing, and I, I just really enjoyed Last Will, so definitely included my number ten, Last Will. It was on my short list, but I did make it. All right, my number ten is one of the few games I think that you guys will disagree with, or at least you will, and that's Yido from uh, um, Pandasaurus, I believe, brought that to America. Yido is a game, it's a worker placement game. Now, when he's talking about not taking yourself seriously. Yido does take itself very seriously. Uh, it's a, a very strong thematic game in which you're placing workers to, a, to send out people on missions for sa of samurai and such. But you can really get messed over in this game more so than most worker placement games. Hmm. There's a guy who can shut down whole sections of the board. Um, there are event cards, which I actually would recommend not playing with them because they're almost too annoying. But other than that, I do like going around collecting the, the weapons you need for the mission and the people you need. It, it has a strong similarity to Lords of Waterdeep if Lords of Waterdeep was meaner and heavier. Okay. Okay. I actually haven't played that one. Yeah, you have, and you I weren't a big fan it. of it. I was not a big fan of it because of the chaos factor, because of the take that nature of it. And uh, if I'm going to put a couple hours into a game, I don't necessarily want to be playing a game that has all of that backstabbery in it right i mean there's a level that's okay and I'll, i can play with backstabbery but i mean that was just too much so i i this one has actually dropped for me a bit mm. i really really liked it and i still really enjoy it but there are a lot of people i can't play it with a lot of people don't like the right. meanness of it so it's fallen a bit for that okay my number 10 is empires the age of discovery which uh when i played it used to be called age of empires 3 yeah um this was put out by, uh, this is a Glenn Grover design, and uh, it's a great game because it has uh, such a great theme to it. It's the, the theme just comes through, it's original, it's uh, about colonizing the Americas, and uh, you have many different kinds of workers, which depending on where you place them do different things, so it's neat, you can manage that as well. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot going on, and this was a game that surprised me when I first played it, because I hadn't played anything like it, especially from the designer before, you know. And you suddenly, I mean, the game, you suddenly start playing and realize, man, this is a serious Euro game. This, there's a lot going on here. This yeah. is solid. So that's my number 10. Um, I no longer own it because I didn't get to play it very often. And um, it was hard to get to the table. It was a little fiddly. But the game is a solid, solid Euro. So that's my number 10, Empires, The Age of Discovery. Good choice. Yep. My dice. All right, here we go. Here we go. Second roll. Come on. Five. Four. Oh, that was a six. All right. Man. There you go. A two, just for those of you watching. My number nine is, uh, I think, the newest game on this list, actually. That is Caverna from Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg. Um, Caverna is like a Agricola fixed, basically. <laughs> and I, I think I'm not going to be the last one to mention this game. Uh... But I really like this one. I, I do not like Agricola. I don't really like the other ones I've played from him that are big games. I haven't played m most of them. I played Aura Labor. I don't like that. But Caverna actually was enjoyable. It was great. You could, you know, the worker placement tension was there. Uh, mm -hmm. The paths to victory are there. Mm -hmm. The game does not punish you. It's not overly punishing. Um, it lets you do what you want to do. That's the thing that does it for me. I really like the the feel of you, it's like playing house, you know, in a board game. Are you still yeah, making it. your list, man? Sorry, I'm fixing something. He's changing stuff on the fly. I know. He loves right? me today. I don't know. Ah, um, hey. 
you can you know develop in the cave you can develop outside you can go animals uh, grow mm. crop whatever you want it's great um so that's my number nine you'll hear more about it i'm sure in a little bit caverna Oh, my number nine is a game that I really, really enjoy, but it sometimes it feels like other people enjoy it more than me. The expansion helped that a lot, and that's Lords of Waterdeep. Hmm. Lords of Waterdeep, and you notice it's really close to... <laughs> it's really close to Yido. Um, in the list, that's because, like I said, they're very comparable. And I said Yido was better than Lords of Waterdeep, but in, in playing them more often, both of them, Lords of Waterdeep just has a very timeless thing to it. Did you just say Plung? Playing. playing. I just said it really fast. Yankee. Oh. It's my Yankee thing. Plung. I heard playing. I was playing them. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I think the expansion really upped the level, gave more options, added a cool corruption mechanism to the game. Just very solid game for me. Lords of Waterdeep. Good pick number nine for me is a western themed yeah. worker placement game that I really enjoyed. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the mechanics of the game was and I thought this was kind of strange, was that it was one of the worker placement games that you could actually take the spot of somebody else by shooting them. If it's Carson City, you are correct. Uh, I was thinking Deadwood. Deadwood, oh, oh that. yeah, Deadwood. Deadwood. I actually thought you were gonna say Carson City, but uh -huh. they both do that. Yeah, yeah Deadwood's a, a simpler version of that. Yes. Do you and, have Deadwood? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I, I wish I did though, because I really enjoyed playing it. And the reason I enjoy playing it is because um, you know, there's the, t those times in worker placement games where the guy right ahead of you takes exactly where you wanted to go, and you're like, Wah! but now you can go, Nya! and right. you might miss, but you can try. Violence coming to a house you near you. You can try <laughs> to steal that place back because it was originally yours. Anyway, uh, that's my number nine, Deadwood. I'm surprised there's not more worker placement games that let you kind of shove someone else out of the spot. I think it's because worker placement games. It's like such a whole, you know. It's like, oh, don't mess with them. They're worker placement games. Ooh, yeah, they're confrontation. Yours. How dare you? you know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's largely why it isn't done. Number eight. All right, number eight. Come on, big six. Uh, <laughs> Five to three. Bubba needs a new bag. You don't, you don't get anything. Oh, Ooh, it's a tie. A tie. Roll off, baby. Yeah. There you go. I'm last. All right. Number, with my five, I'm going to go with number eight. And this game is called Spirium. Spirium, my number eight. And the reason I like this worker placement game um, better than others is that you placed your worker, and that worker had two possibilities rather than just one. Right. And so that if one got taken, you still had the other one available to you. And that's the reason why I, I like Spirium better. It's kind of a little bit of a twist, kind of like with Deadwood where you could take stuff away. But with Spirium, you have two choices there that are available to you. And that's what kind of stuck out to me about Spirium. So my number eight, Spirium. I think, I think Spirium is a worker placement game, but it doesn't feel like one to me. I, it almost feels like area control. But no, you're right. That is worker placement game. But it's 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 almost like a an offshoot kind of a different sort of that game. Mm -hmm. Well, it did not make my list, and it would have. I was a little iffy on that definition myself. I do like the game quite a bit, and I like that it's a card game, almost exclusively cards mm -hmm. that form a board, and that's right. great. You know, yeah, that I do like the game quite a bit. It probably would have been in five, six, seven area, mm -hmm. All right. but I decided, yeah, there's no... He's less wishy-washy than I am. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a good choice. So, my bas <laughs> so basically, I was able to put that on my list because I had the gumption of Absolutely. putting it on my list. The courage. Right. And you didn't. You can, you, the guts. You're, you're, you're making nemeses. <laughs> okay, yeah. my number eight is um, Tribune. Um, which is designed by the same guy who did Dean Mocker, actually. But Tribune, again, another game with an expansion that really helps the game out a lot. Tribune's a game where you're putting workers on a board trying to control different, get uh, different uh, people to work for you so that you can control different parts of Roman society, whether that's the plebeians or the patricians or the, you know, the, the, the guards or whatever. There's different groups, and each of those groups gives you special powers and also points for controlling them. Very strong thematic flavor and... 
You, poisoning the workers lets you basically steal control of the groups from other people, something I like a lot. There's this constant back and forth tug of war in the game. Very good, and it works really well with five players, so I really like Tribune. That was cool. that was going to make my list, but I decided against it. I didn't even go down as my 20. But Oh, wow. Okay. All right, my number eight is, uh, I think, the, the my one weird choice for the list. Um, this is a game called We Are uh, Kocha. And it's from Sit Down Games. And uh, We Are Kocha is, Sit down. is uh, it has a steampunk theme. And uh, you know, it's like alternate history steampunk theme. theme. And the idea is it's, uh, it's a little bit like Kingsburg. You're rolling dice. You use the dice to place workers out on the board. And then those workers can move around. You control areas yeah. on the map. You can win <laughs> either by going... What's going on? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's cool. You, you, I'll show you. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think you will, but okay. You control the map, and you can either win by um, gathering a certain amount of the crystals in the game, and you win. There's, or you can win by go, having a, a certain amount of technology. So it's, there's three or four different ways you can win the game, and it's cool. It's really cutthroat because you can go after places where other people are. If you play a die that's higher than the one they use to get there. And but it's got it's got a good amount of stuff happening. There's a lot happening, and it's a cool theme. Um, so that's my number. What are we on? Eight. Wira Kocha. How do you spell that? It's W I R A Q O C H A. Q O C H A. That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, Look it up. All right. That's my eight. That's that's. Is it possible for people who are watching this to find this game? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's on the geek. Doesn't sound like a real game, but it's there. Number seven. Number seven! Come on, six. That's a two. Four. Yeah! Six. You always get to go first. All right. Hey, you're the one that the dice are loving me today. All right, number seven. In my book, for my list, number seven in my book is the Patriarch of Worker Placement Games. It is the one that I, for me, not, not for I didn't everybody. I not know there was a Patriarch. Not for everything, not for everybody, but for me. This was the game that introduced me to Worker Placement Games, and uh, it's the one that turned me on to that mechanic, and that's Pillars of the Earth. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've already talked about Pillars of the Earth multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a, what I would consider to be a classic mm -hmm. uh, in the modern age. And so, Pillars of the Earth, number seven. There you go. All right. Good stuff. All right, my number seven is the first repeat I think we've had so far. This is Deadwood. Yeah. Wow, you both picked Deadwood. <laughs> Absolutely, Deadwood's a great game. Did you, did you think Deadwood was one that neither one of us would pick? I did. Oh, he's disappointed now that you City. picked it. Gotcha. No, I'm happy he picked it. That's yeah, a yeah. great game. I like it way better than Carson City myself, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the it Deadwood, will be Wild here West, <laughs> shootouts. I really like that the, the board expands as you play, so you start yeah. with fewer places to put the, the Cowboys, and then, you know, as the, as the turns go on, it actually grows and expands, and mm -hmm. you got the railroad moving in, yep. going over buildings and destroying them. It's, it's a great balance between... <clears throat> family weight and a good amount of stuff going on so for that theme in worker placement that's the one for me deadwood that's my number seven yep cool my number seven is a game that i struggle with a long time saying is this worker placement but it seems to fit the the category lost and that's cities kingsburg oh. lost. <laughs> well kingsburg you roll dice and then you place those dice on the board to take spots it, it feels like worker placement come your yeah, workers, worker yeah. placement, absolutely. come on well i understand i'm just saying it's you're, just, try, you're trying to be too scientific with your definitions that's all scientific i just i don't know it just Okay. I, I could see people arguing okay. against maybe, it. Maybe too specific. All right. Well, either way, Kingsburg is a lot of fun. We talk about it a lot. This game certainly is in print. Very fun, entertaining game. That was my number seven. Cool. Number six. Feeling this? Come Finally, on, let baby. me go first. Five. Oh, six. Five. Oh, are you kidding? Six. What? That's it. That's it. All right. That's me. Number six. Last. Me. 
is the Manhattan Project. Hey, hey! The Manhattan Project is a fairly recent Kickstarter that uh, that did it just right. It's got a good theme. Yeah. It's original for sure. It's you know, um, and it's got a neat, a couple of neat mechanisms in that when you place workers, they stay out there until you take a turn to recall them. Mm -hmm. Meaning you have to waste turn and you empty up the board for other people. It's it's a neat timing trick. You know, right. it really works well. Uh, the game feels like a race. You're racing to a number of points. So that's another cool thing. You know, every time you have to waste a turn on something that you feel you have to do, but it's kind of small. You it always stings you a little bit. I like that too. You're like, oh man, I'm falling behind. So that's a cool one. I like it a lot. The Manhattan Project. That's yeah. my number six. That sound. That that's actually really cool. I before you said that, I really hadn't realized that. But it is like a race. Yeah. And it kind of fits the theme of an arms race, which mm -hmm. is what it's built around. So right. that that's really cool. Right. This is why I think the genre is so strong because I love that game, right. and it didn't make my top ten. Really. You know, it's a great game, but I just there was to me there's so many good ones. Yeah. All right, my number six. Um, this is going to. Uh, this is the first of three historically themed games that are at the at the heart of my list, and uh, uh, that is what Z already mentioned once: Age of Discovery, Age of Empires three. Uh, just man, the the theme, the historical theme, is just dripping off of that game. It was a little heavy the first time that I, I played it. Um, um, other times that I played it afterward, it's lightened up. I I have noticed that there are certain people that I will not play this game. <laughs> um, but and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. But that'll just be our our joke. I'm sorry, we can't let you in on that. But um, Age of Empires three is a solid worker placement game, and if you are any kind of history buff uh, and you like worker placement, you should go out and get it. Absolutely. And he's not talking about Jason. No, he's not. Okay, my numbers. Six is really similar to my number seven, Alien Frontiers, and Kingsburg are often compared to each other. Yes. So Alien Frontiers is my number six. Again, this one I felt much stronger. You have ships, you put them in certain spots depending on what combinations you roll and such. It very much like this, especially with the expansion. That's what pulled it ahead of, of Kingsburg for me. Hmm. They're very similar. They both have great expansions. I just had this list earlier. Uh, I, well, not this list, a question though. What about Kingsburg? Expansion necessary or expansion not necessary? I would say... I mean, we've already had this discussion on another list, but... Uh, I would say Kingsburg, the expansion, is necessary if you're a gamer. How's that? I think for most people, the base game will be fine. As a, as a gamer, I wanted to like do stuff that other people weren't doing, and the expansion allows me to do that. I agree. It gives me stuff that no one else does, but I don't think... I mean, once I play with it, I'll never not play without it. Yeah. But I don't think you like. Oh, well, you're not playing the right way without it. Yeah, yeah. not necessary, but adds cool stuff. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Well, I almost consider it necessary, but I don't want to say that. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you just did, so. Gotcha. <laughs> Suckered. <laughs> Number five. Want to roll yet? I don't feel like I have. Come on. Two. Two. Oh, come on, roll two. That'd make me happy at least. I'm Four. I'm uh, going first, baby. Uh, I'm going second. <laughs> You're going last again in your face. <laughs> this is, who thought this rule up? Uh, you did. <laughs> All right. Continuing on with my uh, triumvirate of history-themed uh, worker placement games, number five, uh, Francis Drake. Francis Drake. Now, this, I think, the theme doesn't drip as heavily from this one, but the theme still works with it. I liked Francis Drake because it did add some confrontation into it other than just the tension from the worker placement aspect of it. I also like the extra addition of the worker placement to where um, you could you could go all the way as far as you want, but you're skipping all this other stuff and you have no chance of going back to it. It seems kind of fiddly when you add the theme in there, but it's a cool mechanic that I enjoyed. Okay, so um, the fighting at the end is that confrontation at the end of each turn. It, uh, it is the confrontation that's added into the game, which I thought was refreshing for a Euro-ish game. So uh, my number five, Francis Drake. All right. I actually haven't played that yet. I gotta get that played. Wow. Yeah, it's very good. All right, my number five is a, uh, a two-player only game that Z-Man put out called Targi. Uh, T-A-R-G-I. And this is a game that was actually uh, out. No, this one exists, I promise. This is out. This was out in print for a while before it came to the U.S. Actually, uh, 
and then Z-Man picked it up, put it out here, and it's a great game. It's a, it's a little abstractish, and it's 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 sort of puzzly, but it's neat because the game is just cards, but you build a, you build basically a board with the cards, and then you place workers across. They can never be placed across from one another. And there's a couple of rules like that, and then where where you place the workers, where they intercept, you also get that card. So you get where you place them and where they inter intercept. So it gives you a lot of things to think about. Like you might want a card that where two cards intercept, but the one on the outside might not be that beneficial, but you gotta, you know, it's that give and take, you gotta figure what you wanna do. And there's some, uh, you know, resource collection, and it's it's got a lot going on for just a two-player game, and I really like it. Um, so if you're looking for a good worker placement game that's just for two, plays quickly, but gives you a lot of tactical things to think about, look into it. Targi, I really like mm. it. Three, three strikes on that one. You're, I love your descriptions sometimes. Because I know I'm never going to like that game. Abstract, yeah. puzzly, cards yeah. only. Yeah. yeah, you'll probably hate it. <laughs> you'll probably hate it. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, my number five has already been said by Sam, and that's Pillars of the Earth. What? what? It's a pretty, pretty easy pick for me. I really like the game, and I love the randomization of when the workers go out. Very few games do that. You know, it's, uh, you, you know, we go around the table. This one you pull from a bag, but... The people who put them out first have to pay dearly for that. It's a really yeah, cool balancing. Yeah. In fact, you almost don't want to go first sometimes. Yeah. Don't pull mine from the bag. I don't got the money to afford it. You know, <laughs> right, type yeah. thing. So, cool. Number four. Four chances left here. Come on. Come on. <gasps> That's a one on him, by the way. All right, that's me. Then you won with a, last again. You won with a three. Three, baby. Oh no! Please All right, again. my number four. <laughs> my number four, uh, and I think we're gonna get into the. It's been mentioned already. Territory here yeah, really soon. Definitely. Number four is Kingsburg for me. Um, cool. Really good dice game. Lots of neat stuff going on. Um, it's got a good flow to it. It's got a little, you know, it sort of does the one year, then you do the other one, mm -hmm. that winter, summer thing. It, it works. But it also definitely has that spot thing where you're like, you just took my spot. Oh, absolutely. You just took my spot. And you have that push your luck thing where you sometimes keep a low die late, but then, you know, you're hoping, oh, use your one. Use it. Get, use it on something yeah. else. <laughs> right. You know, so it's, it's, it's a great game. It's, yeah. It's been around for a few years now, too, but it, it holds up quite well. It, it makes you think, what do I really need? If I get screwed on everything else, yeah. what do I need? That's what I do first. Absolutely. I don't. I try to see what I can get away yeah, with. Yeah, that's what you no. usually do. Yeah, but you do that in push your luck games and always <laughs> bomb. So, that's my four. Thanks. Kingsburg. <laughs> All right, my number four. Uh, the third, the highest, I guess this is the uh, Caesar of my triumvirate, uh, and that is... Uh, uh, Manhattan Project, already mentioned by Z. Cool. Really love the flavor of this game. Really enjoyed it. Has great component quality without feeling like it was overproduced. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and sometimes when you have those, I mean, I, I love minis, don't get me wrong, I love good components, uh, but sometimes you're just like, wow, they really added like 30 bucks to the game with this, with these components. They could have done something a little bit and made it a little bit more affordable, but Manhattan did a really good job. I don't know that you ever say that. I know, but... Come on. But, you uh, usually say the other thing. You're like, what is this, piece of paper? No, I understand that. There's a there's a line that, that I draw in my ever-shifting sandbox that says that's overproduced. I wish they would have come with lesser, lesser quality components, not cruddy components, but lesser quality to keep that price point down. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a line there that's there. I mean... I mean, I'm, I'm not living in La La Land. I, I do have, you know, a, a bank account and a family to feed and that type of stuff. I can't drop. And here's the bank account number now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. The workers are easily, there. you can easily differentiate between them. Yeah. And if they were miniatures, exactly. it might be a little bit, you would right. take that couple more seconds. Right, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's very cool. I like it. Manhattan Project, my number four. Now I get to go. Yay. Loser. Number four. <laughs> For me is Francis Drake, already mentioned by Sam. Yeah. It might have made it higher on my list if it wasn't for the fact that the, the worker placement's only part of the game. It's not a it's like half the game. But I love the fact that you can only when you can put the workers down wherever you want, but you can never go back. So you can skip stuff to get ahead of other people. Sure. Right. It's almost I could see an argument that it's not worker placement in a sense, because you, you could just say you're moving your pawn forward 
rather than... But you are covering stuff up for other people, too. You have multiple pawns, though. I understand that. What I'm saying is, there was a game called Tutankhamen. The name of it? Um, Tutankhamen. Tutankhamen. Okay. Really? Did you just mess up Tutankhamen? Oh, yeah, because I... Tut and... All right. The point is... <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. The point is, is that game, what happened in that game was you could move as far ahead as you want and take right. whatever tile. Yeah. So when you'd move there, you'd move to that tile, and then when you moved off the tile, you would take the tile off the right. board. That's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. But we don't consider that one a worker placement yeah, game. If you have multiple guys. I, have, I have not played the yeah, new I one. Played. I've played Tutankhamen, and I've played Tokaido. But well, I have not played Francis well, Drake. But if you have multiple guys, then I'm assuming... In Tutankhamen, do you have multiple guys, or do you no, just have one, one dude? one. You've won, but what I'm saying is... That's not the same thing, then. I'm saying it, but it essentially is the same thing. Yes, you've multiple guys. I put a guy down, and then I could put a guy out farther. Mm -hmm. But what difference would that have been if I took that guy and just marked that spot? You leave the guy no, there the, to mark the, that no one else goes to the, that spot. The, dif the difference is you have the ability to put one of your guys here, not that far out, and then still possibly have the ability of putting your guy here too. Well, right, but that's how the, the game that the, the, the name I cannot say is you can go to wherever you want. You go there and then you can move again farther and then you take that space off the board. It's the same thing as if I had put a worker there and then my next turn I put a worker there. I disagree, but okay. Okay. Well, I guess you'd have to play it's, both. It's, to it's, really, I, I don't know. It just... It, and, it, uh, I don't, it's almost the exact same thing. The only minor difference is... I just used the word almost. Well, no. The only minor difference is, is that you could technically... Exactly the same earlier. In the, the Tut game, you could go to every space. Because you have a limited amount of workers in Francis Drake, you can't go to every space. Although, very rarely does anyone run out of workers in that game anyway. So, mm -hmm. it, it, it's... I don't know. Anyhow. I don't know what I'm saying. I really like the game. So, it's, it's number four. What was it again? Francis Drake. Yeah, you probably have to say that again. Number three. Come on, top three. Four, I feel it. <laughs> Six. All right. I'm not last. <laughs> That's what we're going for. I got it. Two, not I'll being seven. last. All right. My number three. Is I don't think you guys like this game. I don't know. I don't even think Sam has played this actually. It's called Santiago de Cuba, and uh, yeah, I don't think you've played it, right? Have you? I think I have. Okay, Santiago de I mean, Cuba. Anyway, is uh, the fact that I can't remember if I have or not. Yeah, there you go. Um, it's a small game. It's one of the smallest ones, except for Targi, which is smaller than that. This is the second smallest game on the list, and uh, it's really neat because it's quick. It's about forty-five minutes. It's got worker placement mixed with a rondelle mechanic in which you are moving around uh, and you can choose how far you move by paying more. Yeah, but I don't get where the worker placement part is. Worker placement is when you go out to the buildings and if you put a worker on one of the buildings, you go knocking on the door and then you, no, nobody else can take that. Get him, um, get him. It's that's not get worker placement. That's just showing you control a building. How's that worker placement? No, no, you place it and you take the action and the worker stays there. Nice sense. <laughs> It's definitely worker placement, and, and I checked Board Game Geek. It's worker placement on there, too. It's not like that site is perfection, okay? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> anyway. I'm just saying. No, I consider it a worker placement game, sure. It's got a rondelle mechanic also, but it, there's definitely worker placement. There's shipping in the game. There's resource management. I mean, you know, it's got a lot of things, but one of them is worker placement. Okay, you're making the game sound much more grandiose than it is. That's you're true. driving a car right. around an island and stopping on spaces. I like the game. That's true. That's but I would true. never consider it worker placement because that's a minor, tiny thing on the side. Um, I don't know. I think it's like a good. Driving the car. Least. Driving the car is what matters. Yeah, but where you stop with the car is, decides where you can go, what building. You know, another game that. that uh, yeah, another okay. Game Another game in which driving the car really matters? <laughs> Formula D. I knew. Okay. Worker placement. Uh, that's placement. Okay, so anyway, that's my number three. I toot its horn a lot. These guys don't like it. Um, doot, doot. Check no, it out. What are you talking? I like the game. Yeah. You do? I thought you didn't like it too much. No, I liked it. It was, I, it was much better than Cuba. That's true. So It's also smaller, quicker. Cool. I enjoy it. It's right up my alley. Santiago to Cuba three for me. All right. My number three is Caverna, because I don't get to do anything unique anymore. Um, 
Caverna. And now I want to quick make a, mo a thing here. The reason I didn't put Lahav, I love Lahav. Uh, in, in, in this is because Lahav, you have one guy and you move him to a spot and you do whatever that spot lets you do. Okay. And even though that's technically worker placement, it just doesn't feel like it because you move one guy around. What's Board Game Geek say, though? Well, it doesn't matter. Caverna, though, the worker placement matters a lot more. And it, like I, like I said, with most of these lists, has completely displaced the, the A word um, game. Am I allowed to say that now? Agricola? Agricola! Kids, cover your ears. Okay. So anyway, my number my number three is Caverna. All right, Caverna. Well, my number three is it Caverna Sam? No, it's not. It is a game that has been mentioned by both of you already, though. I told you there was gonna be overlap. Kingsburg. That's a game that uh, you know I won't I won't belabor it any longer. It's a great game. I actually uh, um, think that you should get the expansion. Um, if you have a lot of money burning your burning a hole in your pocket, um, go ahead and get the dice. I have not yet because I oh I was gonna say that's a lot of money. <laughs> I don't I don't have that money burning a hole in my pocket. No, don't but if you have the extra, like I had, I saw a post on on the geek. Yeah, I've got some disposable cash. I'm like, what's that? Well, you can just, What's well, I'm not going to buy anything, so I'm just going to dispose of it. I would I never, know, just, ever recommend you get the dice. I that. would, because I, I think they're really cool looking. But, I, I mean, I'm, if you don't have the money. cool looking, another whole new game. <laughs> well, that's true. You really have to like Kingsburg. Yeah. But the expansion, definitely, I think you need to yeah. pick, pick it up. I'm with you. Um, because it is a modular expansion, you don't have to use all of it. You can use yeah. parts of it and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, Kingsburg, great. If you can get the expansion, even better. All right. Number two. Okay. I'm feeling it. It's getting serious now. Oh, three. <laughs> what a beast. What a beast. Yes. Three also. Oh, oh, I have a chance. Me first. I have a chance. Come on, Z. No. I've been had. Mama, I'm sorry, Mama. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right. My number two, which I know these guys are on these guys' list because they were already talking about Deadwood, Carson City. Okay. I like Deadwood, but Carson City to me was the pitch-perfect combination of Wild West and a, a really solid game. Really solid game where you could fight over the spots, you know, but you're also building a city and... You're, you know, there's just a lot of cool features of the game. Very much liked it. It's deeper than Deadwood, actually. It's like um, a big brother, yeah. Yeah, and, um, but just a great game. So, easy choice for me, number two, Carson City. Okay, cool. I didn't know you liked it that much. I did. Cool. All right, that's me. Number two has been mentioned already, Alien Frontiers, uh, which is a little bit like Kingsburg. I like it. Um, so you agree with me that it's a little better than Alien I do, Frontiers. I do, yeah. I think it's a little bit Maybe better. Maybe than Kingsburg. It's got a better theme. I like the theme better. It does away with the, the board of the first one. Kind of looks a little mathy, you know I mean? It looks like a grid. And uh, in this one you have the planet. you got the different stations circling the planet. It's got just a really cool retro sci-fi look to it. You know, the artwork. Mm -hmm. um, it's just got a better vibe, you know, for me. Uh, so yeah. the gameplay is about as solid, you know. You're collecting resources and churning them back out, controlling areas. Uh, it does have a um, an area control aspect of it, which the other game doesn't. But um, I really like it. I like it a lot. So that's my number two. Okay. My number two is a game that I have actually been playing a lot of lately, and uh, I'm glad for it. Uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Ah, I made it that high. Yes, oh, let me get the did. pen. Let me get the pen. Right. <laughs> what? <Keep going. laughs> all right, fine. We've all done it now. Um, Lords of Waterdeep has, um, you know, it, it it doesn't really. It has a very thin veneer of a theme. It's it's not thick at all. Um, you could really slap any kind of theme on it at all uh, that you desired. Um, but the artwork on the cards. Um, and my having played D and D in the past, I, I guess I'm able to visualize 
uh, you know, sending your guys, your, your, your group of heroes out on this quest to finish this test and all this other kind of stuff. So anyway, a very thin veneer game, but, but a very solid, a very um, seamless game, I think. I mean, we played, uh, what was it, six players? Was it six? No, five. I think it was a five-player game. Five-player game. The one you just played. On, on five tu on yeah. Tuesday, and it it it, w it took us about eh, about two hours. Yeah, maybe even it, l less than that was, for sure. It was a really quick five-player game, and and I don't know that that's pretty cool when you get a five-player game. I think and, the theme is stronger than Sam says. I think the cubes detract. If you buy the little dudes, that helps. Yeah, yeah. And if you just get into a little bit more, because if you look at the missions, they actually do make thematic sense. It will be like one says, "Free the right. fighters." And you I get was, a bunch of fighters. Right, and I was looking at some of that the other day um, because the uh, we played with the expansion. It was my first time playing with the expansion. Uh, Scoundrels of Skull, Skull Deep or whatever you call Skull it. Skullport. Skullport, there you go. Um, <clears throat> and one of them was a, it was a, I can't remember what kind of, of uh, test it was, but it had to do with intrigue. And you, because you were dealing in intrigue, you got corruption from it. And that's where... The themes to kind yeah, of, I think the corruption the theme added kind of to the popped. Theme. The right. theme kind of popped right there, where it, it, they they're working that into the mechanics of the game. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think it's very cool. It's definitely one you should check out. Lords of Waterdeep. To number one. And finally, number one. All right, I've won one time now. I'm feeling good. I don't actually want to lose here, so I can go last. Ooh, we're tied. Six. Double six. Come on. If I roll six, six I'm leaving. I'm just saying. Without Come on. Finishing. Ro please, please, six. Oh, <laughs> oh the antithesis. <laughs> oh, six, six and five. Go ahead. All right, my number one has been mentioned already. Pillars of the Earth. I wow. If I had been guessing this time, which I didn't, Pillars of the Earth. Because yeah. you, you really like that game. I do like it a lot. I think it's got. The perfect balance between theme, game length, involvement, tension for spots on the board, money management. Ah, oh, man, everything just clicks for me in that game. You know, it looks good. Yeah. Um, I haven't even read the book, but mm -hmm. I don't think you have to. What it's no, based on. No. It's, no, for it me. just works. It's a great game. The one negative I have against it is I, um, I think it caps out at four. If I'm not mistaken, and I think there was an expansion which might have added a fifth or sixth yes. player, which I've not played with, but it's a great four-player game. I mean, it's one of the best. So that's my number one for worker placement. If you like the genre at all, you got to give this game a shot. Pillars of the Earth. All right. My number one also has been mentioned by both of these guys, and I like it a lot more than both of them, and that's... Age of Empires, or whatever it's called now. What did you write? Empires. Age, Age of Discovery, or... It's called Age, Empires, Age. the Age of Discovery now. Yeah, and actually, this is one of the first worker placement games that really brought it to people's attention, what a great mechanism was. People were... I, a lot of Euro gamers are kind of like sniffing their noses at Eagle Games when this came That's out. Right. They're like, oh, they make all those war games. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, Age of, this, Age of Empires, oh, it's made after a computer game. And then they like played it, and they're like... This Ooh. is enjoyable. <laughs> How can we like it? That's plastic figures. <laughs> oh no! It's now turning into a gremlin while he's playing. It's going on. But I, but I really like it. I love this. Is, there's, there's a lot of worker placement games out there, but very few of them use the mechanism where each worker has different abilities where they go. Yeah. Now there are some like that. We just played one called Archon recently, and well, Manhattan Project also. Manhattan Project, and I love, but I love that. That's a great thing. And in this one, you know, the missionary does something. And it also has an area control game mixed in there. Build buildings. And I think the expansion added a lot by adding more buildings and giving each person a unique special ability. Mm -hmm. I really love this game. Fantastic. It looks beautiful, too. And that's uh, Age of Empires. I'm just going to call it that because I can never remember the other name. Yeah, cool. Age of Empires 3. All right, my number one is a game that um, has been on both our lists. Has not been on both of our lists. Ooh, yeah, I, I, uh, I thought it was going to be Alien I, Frontiers. I, I, I pulled, I pulled Caverna off. I pulled Caverna oh, pulled off. off. Yeah, I didn't include it. I'll explain why later. I'm sorry, <laughs> Z. I, I, I don't know what this could be actually. Um, it's a game that I, I, I have played many, 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 oh, 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 many, 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 many times. Make the three-player list. 
Yes, many times with my family, and it's that's why I included. Oh, it because, whoa, 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 Stone Age. Yes, whoa. exactly, Stone Age. Um, uh, you, we were talking about you know the other game. I can't remember. I think it was Deadwood. That it was kind of in between mid level or family level and right. Bit, I, Stone Age is family level, I think. Definitely, definitely. And, and that's why I included this on my list. I'm not. Uh, maybe some of you were, were expecting Caverna, and uh, I was actually... No, I was expecting Alien I Frontiers. Was not, I oh. was not expecting it. I, I, if I, 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 I thought it might be in the 8, 9, 10 range. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah well, um, Caverna was 11. It almost made the list, but, but not just... not just uh, Stone Age definitely was solid. That was the first one when I saw it. That's definitely on the 10. That's yeah. definitely in top 5. Um, so... Absolutely, Stone Age. If you have not played Stone Age, you definitely need to try it, um, and uh, you will like it. If you like worker placement, it has some similarities to Pillars of the Earth, almost. Yeah, yeah. I, I think of one, I think of the other. I just like Pillars of the Earth. For you, me, in my opinion, it's a little less lucky. You don't have to pay to put your guys out though with Stone Age. That's which, true. But which you have to roll for resources, so it's got a little bit of that luck. You know what I mean? Like you right. don't know what you're gonna get. Yes. It also yeah. includes the vision. Yes. Division. I don't, I, well, I yeah, don't because you part. divide the whatever number you roll oh, by that. You roll. the vision. No. What the vision? Um, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Like what, what is that? Is like that a, an expansion? No, it's an evil bad guy. Yeah, the vision. Know. All right. But yeah, I think. I mean, those two games are both really good. It just depends what kind of game you like. If I think that one's a little luckier, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely got a little bit more math. Also, I think. And the scores tend to be really high. They're like in the hundreds, right? They can be. The fewer yeah. the fewer players you have, the higher the scores will there be. There you go. Yeah, I like the other one better, obviously. That one doesn't even make my list because I did think it was too random for me. Mm. But they're both solidly put together. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we had two games, I think, that were on all three lists. That's Age of Empires and, um, yeah. and Pillars, uh, Pillars, Pillars, Pillars of the Earth. Those? those were the two that were on all three lists, yeah. I think. And of course, Wiracocha. You didn't put Lords of Waterdeep, right? I did not. No, I don't like that. No, game. He doesn't like that. Man, there's something wrong with you. What about Alien Frontiers? Oh, Sam didn't do it. I, I didn't do that one. Was it in your top 20? Yeah, yeah. Alien Frontiers is 14 for me. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, there's a lot of overlap. To me, I think there's a lot of really solid games out there. There was not one game that anyone picked here of, of these two guys. I don't know what they'll say about my list. But of their two lists where I would say, no, I don't like that. Uh, except, I mean, with the, with the uh, caveat that two of these games I'm not sure exist. Um, but no. But I haven't played two of the year games. The Targi game and the Who Watch Wong. We're a coach. Yeah. I'll show it to you. Okay. <laughs> Any final thoughts on worker placement? What do you think about Manila? Is that a worker placement game? Well, you know, I thought about it for a while, but it's almost like a... I don't know, it's a casino game that's... Yeah, uses... my, I, I had it at 12, but I, I, I can see the, the argument that it, that it was more of a auctioning or a bidding game than, than a worker placement game. I mean, there's worker placement, but I think it's such a... It's a fine line, and the more... It's such a low bar for, more for that mechanic. Goes, the more time goes by, the more these mechanics melt into one another, you know? Yeah, okay. So, it is hard to say, is it a worker placement game? I don't know. Does it have worker placement in it? Well, yeah, I mean, you yeah. have a guy, you put him on a boat, no one else can go there. That's kind of worker placement, you know? Um, but again, like I said at the beginning, I think I mentioned this, the... The genre as a whole, to me, it's not really, I don't, you know, read up on a game and go, oh, it's worker placement. I love how I'm reading in a magazine, apparently. Uh, <laughs> it's worker placement. I really got to look into it, you know. He flips pages on yeah, his iPad. Apparently. Um, but there are some I really like. Like the top, you know, four or five on my list are games I can never see getting rid of. You know what I mean? Yeah. But typically, the games in that category that come out, do tend to be a little dry, a little samey. They do cannibalize one another a lot. And I don't like that. In his opinion. In my opinion, of course. And, but every now and then one comes through that is just amazing. All right, well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I am the purple guy of death. Sam Hill. Oh, I can beat that! Oh, three. <laughs> Don't fool me! You win! <laughs>